I'm Nave, and I'm a postdoc at the Data Systems Lab at Harvard. And uh, our paper is called The Log Structured Merge Bush and the Wacky Continuum. This is joint work with my advisor, Stratos. So as we all know, our applications and database systems are ingesting more data more quickly as time goes by. To help us cope with this need, uh, the Log Structured Merge Tree, or LSM tree, was invented in the 90s. And today it's being used across a wide number of um, applications and databases in industry. The main thing that LSM tree allows us to achieve is fast writes. Now, in addition to just fast writes, we also want to be able to process fast reads, and we want to be able to scale to, to massive data sizes. However, the problem that we observe is that as the data size increases, the costs of both reads and writes uh, tends to increase as a function of the data size. So in this presentation, I want to talk about why that is and what we can do about solving this problem. And I'll start off with some background on how LSM tree works. So uh, LSM tree buffers all application writes in main memory. Whenever this buffer fills up, we sort it by key, and we flush it to storage as a sorted run, uh, sorted array called a run. Now, LSM tree sort merges runs in the background, and it organizes them into levels of exponentially increasing capacities. Now, in modern implementations, you typically have fence pointers in memory, which allow you to, which store the first key of every block of every run. So they allow you to access each run with just one I.O. And we typically also have Bloom filters, which allow, us to, which allow point reads to skip accessing runs that don't contain the key you're looking for. So they allow us to, right, so they allow us to skip runs. Now, a crucial design aspect for LSM trees is the merge policy, which dictates when and how you merge runs. And the merge policy controls an important trade-off between the cost of reads and writes. So in particular, as you increase merge greediness, um, entries will participate in more uh, merge operations across their lifetimes, and so you'll have a higher amortized write cost. On the other hand, you'll have fewer runs in the system, so reads will tend to be cheaper. So now, uh, right, so now to manage this trade-off, there are typically two types of merge policies that are widely deployed in the industry. These are called tiering and leveling. So tiering is more write-optimized, and leveling is more read-optimized. And here is roughly how they work. So with a tiered LS entry, each level just gathers a bunch of runs, and when it reaches capacity, it merges these runs and flashes the resulting run into the next level. With a level LS entry, on the other hand, each level performs a merge operation as soon as a new run comes in. If the resulting run now exceeds the capacity of the level, we then flush it to the next level. Okay, so with both of these schemes, we have log of n runs in the system, where n is our data size, and r is our base ratio, which dictates the capacity ratio between adjacent pairs of levels. So with respect to the base ratio, with the tiered LS entry, we have R runs per level. And with the leveled LS entry, we just have one run per level because we're more greedy about merging. Now, the base ratio allows you to fine tune the trade-off between reads and writes uh, alongside with the merge policy. So in particular, when we set the, the base ratio to be really small, in, 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 in particular when we set it to be equal to two, the performance uh, and behaviors of tiered and leveled LS entries converge. And the reason is that at that point, each level can contain at most one run. As soon as a new run comes in, you're already at capacity, so you flush. On the other hand, if we set the base ratio to be really high, in fact, so high that the first level never actually runs out of capacity, your tiered LS entry degenerates into a log because you're never doing any merging, whereas um, your leveled LS entry degenerates into a sorted array because you're merging as soon as the buffer flushes every time. So now we can take all these designs and we can map them onto a trade-off continuum between the cost of reads and writes. So at the edges, we have the sorted array and the log. Um, we can navigate the continuum using tiered and leveled LSM trees, in particular by adjusting the size ratio with either schemes. So you can sort of increase it in either direction. And essentially, all key value stores that utilize LSM trees today inhabit points along this trade-off continuum. Uh, and they can navigate it as well right, by, by adjusting these knobs. The problem that we observe is that as the data size increases, this trade-off curve tends to move upwards. So we end up with fundamentally worse trade-offs for applications to be able to choose between. So the fundamental question guiding our research is whether there are fundamentally better trade-off curves that move outwards more slowly with respect to the data size. So over the past two years, we've had two papers on this topic, which do exactly that. They identify better, more robust trade-off curves. And this year, we have a third one. So that's called Wacky. But these papers all build on top of each other. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about Monkey and Dostoevsky. OK, so Monkey stands for Optimal Navigable Key Value Store. So a paper, paper from Sigma 2017. And in this paper, we looked at how to tune the Bloom filters for LSM tree. So in particular, we noticed that all existing implementations assign the same false positive rate to all the different Bloom filters for all the levels. 
uh, where the false positive rate is given by e to the power of m, where m is the number of bits per entry assigned to the Bloom filter. So that gives you a bound for reads of uh, the false positive rate times the number of levels. Right? That's the expected wasted number of IOs per lookup. And that turns out to be not the, the best bound that you can achieve. So we show that by setting exponentially decreasing uh, false positive rates to smaller levels, you can actually uh, get the sum of false positive rates to converge to a constant that's independent of the number of levels. And by so doing, we can actually shave uh, a factor of log of n, or the number of levels, from point read cost and get a better, better bound. OK, so in this way, Monkey essentially pushes the trade-off curve downwards because reads tend to be cheaper. OK. Now Dostoevsky, uh, is our paper from Sigma 2017, which stands for Space-Time Optimized Evolvable Scalable Key Value Store. Uh, and in this paper, we exploit the fact that we now have exponentially decreasing false positive rates for smaller levels to uh, perform lazy tiered merging at the smaller levels and greedy, merge, greedy leveled merging at the largest level. So effectively what this does is we have lazier merging at smaller levels, so we actually have more runs at these smaller levels. But the fact that the false positive rates are exponentially decreasing means that the lower probabilities of access make up for the greater number of runs. And so overall, we end up with the same bound for reads, but a better bound for writes. So if we, can, if we compare read and write cost to leveling, we see that the bound for reads is the same, but the bounds for writes is better. So we have r plus log of n as opposed to r times log of n. OK, so in this way, Dostoevsky improves on the leveling merge policy and, again, pushes the trade-off curve even more. And now with Wacky. So with Wacky, we re-examine the fact that all existing LS entry designs uh, up until now uh, have assigned uniform capacity ratios between adjacent levels. So in this paper, we, yeah, we question that assumption, and we show that by using non-uniform capacity ratios between the different levels, there are actually still untapped opportunities for improving scalability. So we introduced two new schemes in this paper. Uh, the first one is called squared capped lazy leveling, which assigns a different size ratio just for the largest level. And we also introduced LSM Bush, which assigns decreasing capacity ratios for smaller levels. OK, so these are the two schemes I'll talk about for the rest of the talk. OK, but to really understand and motivate where these designs come from, I'm going to start off by doing a quick problem analysis on the lazy le leveling scheme so we understand the bound and understand the motivation for why we need different size ratios in the first place. OK, so recall that lazy leveling performs la lazy merging at smaller levels and greedy merging at the largest level. So some terminology. We call a merge operation at one of the smaller levels a minor compaction, and we call a merge operation into the largest level a major compaction. And now we can break down the cost of writes with respect to these different types of compactions. So in particular, uh, the cost of uh, the log of n term comes from having to merge each entry once across each, each one of the log of n smaller levels. And the O of R term, the plus O of R term, comes from having to rewrite R entries that already exist at the largest level for every incoming entry during a major compaction. <laughs> OK, so now, as the data size increases, this log of n term increases as a function of the data size. Suppose we wanted to curb that overhead, though, and make it static. Well, the only thing that we could do with this design, as well as all existing LS entry designs, is to increase the base ratio. That's going to decrease the rate of growth for the log of n term. The problem is that that's also going to increase our overhead for major compactions. Right? So what I'm trying to say here is that there is this intrinsic contention between the costs of major and minor compactions. Uh, and this contention arises because essentially all LSM tree designs assign uniform capacity ratios between, between all levels. So the costs of these different sources of overhead um, depend on the same variables. So what we propose to do uh, is to introduce, first of all, a new design called squared cap lazy leveling, uh, which decouples the largest levels ratio from all the other ratios in order to decouple the costs of minor and major compactions. OK, and we abbreviate this design as SCLL. And we call the largest levels ratio the capping ratio. OK, so now we can analyze uh, the cost of reads and writes with respect to our new variable, the capping ratio. Um, and we get the following, the following bounds. The bounds themselves don't matter that much. The important thing is to understand the new trade-offs that the capping ratio enables. So in particular, when we, as we increase the capping ratio uh, while keeping everything else the same, the cost of major compactions goes up, because now you have to rewrite more entries at the largest level for every incoming entry. But on the other hand, the cost of reads actually goes down. And the reason for that is that increasing the capping ratio pushes a higher proportion of the overall data into the largest level, 
This means that your Bloom filters at smaller levels now have the same memory as they had before, but they're applying for fewer entries, which means that you have more effective Bloom filters at smaller levels. Okay, so then the question becomes, how do we want to tune the base ratio relative to the other size ratios? And in the paper, we show that if you actually let the, base, the capping ratio grow at a rate of log of n, so you, you're gradually increasing it as a function of the data size and gradually pushing more data into the largest level as the tree grows, um, something interesting happens. So in particular, if you plug that function of c uh, into our equation for rights, that just simplifies into log of n. But if we plug that function into our cost equation for reads, we have this asymptotic improvement. Right? So now our read cost is gradually decreasing, or I should say, the sum of false positive rates, uh, which dictate the number of wasted IOs per point read, is decreasing as a function of data size. OK, so now a natural question would be, can we trade off that gain that we have attained in reads to improve writes? Um, and the question is yes. So to do that, we can actually increase the base ratio as well as a function of data size. Conceptually, this means that as the data grows, we're actually increasing the width of the LSM tree to slow down the growth of its height. Right? And in particular, and again, the math is not so important, but if you increase the base ratio at a rate of e to the power of square root of log of n, read cost just simplifies into a constant that doesn't change as the data size grows, but write cost actually simplifies to square root of log of n. Right, so the, the intuition here, again, is that rather than growing the LSM tree by height, we're also growing it by width as data grows. So that slows down the overall growth. OK, so relative to a traditional LSM tree, this uh, improves scalability somewhat while maintaining the same point read cost. OK, and it, com it actually complements the, the trade-off curve for lazy leveling and allows us to achieve uh, more um, write-optimized points along the trade-off space. OK, so now we might wonder, uh, can we do even better? Um, so can we do even better than these two schemes, which now complement each other on this new trade-off trade -off curve? Uh, and to do that, we'll do another problem analysis, looking at where the cumulative costs of writes, reads, and memory arise uh, with, with both of these different schemes. So we're going to ignore the largest level for now, just look at the smaller levels. OK, so every entry gets merged once across each one of the smaller levels. Right, so that means that um, write cost derives equally from across all the smaller levels. But that's actually not the case for point reads and for memory. So for point reads, recall that the false positive rates are exponentially decreasing, which means that most of your read overhead derives from the largest level, because uh, the Bloom filters there have exponentially higher false positive rates. Okay, and the same actually holds for memory. So even though we're assigning more bits per entry for Bloom filters at smaller levels, the fact that the number of entries at smaller levels is decreasing at an exponential rate, because this is an LS entry, uh, means that overall we need um, sort of exponentially less memory for smaller levels. So if we draw a cumulative cost breakdown for all of these different metrics, we see something that looks like this, right? So write cost derives equally from across all the different levels, whereas read cost and memory mostly emanate in terms of overhead from the largest levels. So essentially, we have all these compactions that we're doing at smaller levels of the tree, but these are unimpactful. They're not doing much towards curbing our read cost or our memory footprint. And the memory footprint here is specifically for the Bloom filters. So what we propose to do is to eliminate these uh, unimpactful minor compactions with uh, the new design principle of uh, performing lazier merging for newer data. And this is exactly what LSM Bush tries to do. So conceptually, the only thing we're doing with LSM Bush is to take all these smaller levels of the tree across where merging entries and gathering overhead, and we're collapsing these levels onto a fewer set of levels. Right, so then the question is how to do that. So we do that by setting increasing capacity ratios between adjacent pairs of smaller levels so that every, every subsequent smaller level gathers relatively more runs uh, before merging them. Right, so the data gets smaller, but each one of these smaller levels is just gathering uh, more different sorted components before these get merged. And ultimately, the largest level just has like one large run that contains most of the data. OK, in particular, we show that by setting exponentially, uh, doubly exponentially increasing ratio growth rate, again, the math is maybe not that important for here, but you end up with a log log of n number of levels, which translates to a log log of n write cost, because every entry trans uh, just gets merged across one of these levels. And we also show that if you then optimize the 
allocation of main memory across all the different Bloom filters for all the different runs that you have, you actually end up with the same bound for point reads. OK, so let's summarize this. So now LSMbush actually improves on scalability further in terms of write cost relative to SCLL, which in turn improves on a basic LS entry, which has log of n write cost. All of them have asymptotically the same read cost. Um, and it's also interesting to compare these schemes to a log. Right? So with a log goes further than LSMbush in terms of optimizing writes. Right? The log just has a constant write cost. But we see that for a log, there's actually a really steep increase. There's a performance cliff for reads. It's, in some sense, it's not trivial that you can actually achieve these bound for point reads for LSMbush and SCLL. Because right afterwards, there's this cliff. And we're not, we're not completely sure actually what's in between these designs. But this will be something that's interesting to investigate in the future. OK, so overall, um, if we look at all the possible designs of LSM Bush by adopting the base ratio and the capping ratio, we can actually draw a new trade-off curve that's superior to all these previous designs. But so far, I've only talked about point reads and writes. So how about, how about range reads? So actually, for range reads, um, the traditional LSM tree designs are better. Um, and so in this way, essentially, no single LSM tree design dominates across all you know, the space of all possible workloads. Right? So, um, OK, so essentially, to, to tackle this problem, we want to be able to use the best design with respect to the best possible workload. Um, so we classify workloads across two different dimensions to be able to make that decision in a good way. So uh, the two dimensions we're interested in is um, whether we have, on the, on the x-axis, whether we have more reads or more writes. And on the y-axis, whether the reads that we have are more range reads or point reads. So. If you have a lot of range reads in the workload, you want to use the traditional LSM tree designs, right? so leveling or tiering. On the other hand, as the proportion of point reads in the workload is increasing, you want to increasingly use uh, lazy leveling or SCLL. And if you have a lot of point reads, you want to use LSM Bush. OK, so for this reason, we generalize the entire design space. We generalize LSM tree and LSM Bush into a scheme called Wacky, uh, which allows you to, to um, navigate the whole design space using a small set of knobs. So in particular, Wacky includes the base ratio, the capping ratio, uh, a growth exponential, which allows transition, which allows varying the rate of growth rate for the size ratios. And you can also control the, gr um, the greediness of merge operations within levels. All right, and then Wacky can um, navigate these knobs with respect to the workload and hardware. OK, so with respect to performance, very quickly, we measure the performance for RocksDB and ToonDB in a workload where we're increasing the proportion of, uh, of point reads in the workload. And we measure normalized throughput. Monkey improves on these schemes by virtue of optimizing memory allocation among the Bloom filters. Dostoevsky further improves on Monkey by adding the lazy leveled merge policy, which is good, which is better for writes. And finally, Wacky dominates all of these schemes because by definition it's a superset of all of these schemes. And it's particularly better at the more write optimized uh, space. Okay, so that is all. Thanks very much. <laughs>